to next panelist uh, madhuri ji to please present her use case good afternoon i hope i'm visible and audible yeah just one second sharing my screen So hello and good afternoon everyone. Today I would be sharing how forensic audit procedures are being transformed by artificial intelligence. Today I will demonstrate a practical application that builds a more accurate and efficient audit work workflow by combining AI analysis with Python validation. Let's start with why. Forensic auditors face three major challenges. First, we deal with enormous volumes of chaotic data that span across multiple years. And second, manual review is incredibly time consuming and prone to human error. Finally, we need to quickly identify the patterns and anomalies so that we can focus our investigation efficiently. AI addresses all these pain points by enhancing the speed, accuracy, and scope of our preliminary analysis. So this is the workflow that I have implemented. We start by uploading 10 years worth of financial data to Claude, which calculates the Venetian score and looks for anomalies or possible red flags. Our attention is then directed to where it is most needed by incorporating these insights straight into a structured audit plan. So this focus strategy saves a significant amount of time during the initial assessment phase. The Venetian score model, which employs the eight financial ratios to identify the possible earnings manipulation is the foundation of this strategy. Claude flags the concerning patterns in these ratios, particularly the spikes or inconsistencies. So these signals help us narrow down the specific years and accounts that need deeper investigation thereby creating a risk-based audit roadmap. While AI is incredibly powerful, it's not infallible. It comes with a built-in disclaimer that it could make mistakes. So despite being trained on large data sets, I discovered that AI models don't always adhere to the precise accounting logic. So verification of results and quality control are therefore very crucial. So this led me to develop an additional validation strategy. I developed a Python-based validation tool. And the amazing thing is that this is generated by AI with one prompt. And it also gave me step-by-step -step instructions on how to run it. Using Excel data as the input, the tool computes Benetian score and provides year-by-year -year interpretation. So this provides us with a validation of the AI analysis. Now, let me show you how this works. In practice, I will demonstrate both the AI tool and also the uh, Claude results. So here, this is my input file. I have the 10-year financial statements of a client. I have their profit and loss account, the balance sheet, the cash flow statement, and the key financial ratios. I will be inputting the file to Claude and asking it to provide the Venetian score calculation for each year. I will specifically ask what formulas are supposed to be used and also I will ask Claude to give me a risk categorization. So let's see what Claude generates. So this is the summary table of Venetian score analysis. I have got the years flagged as high risk, moderate risk, and low risk areas. So while Claude gave me this result, I will also check whether Claude's results are right using a tool. So this is a Venetian score tool that I had designed using Python. To design this tool, I use this prompt. That is, 
I give it the exact definition of what I want calculated and how I want each formula to be referenced and also to flag the risks. So when we run this on chart GPT, we will get step-by-step -step instructions. Additionally, I also added that I want step-by-step -step instructions on how to install all the required files and perform the checks because I did not have any experience in Python or coding. So if you can see, ChatGPT has beautifully given me all the steps plus the codes. So I've already installed the code and run the tool. Now all I have to do is choose my input file. And here the tool will give me the results, the same thing that is M score and component wise calculations along with the risk level flagging. So this can be cross verified with the uh, Claude results. So second prompt that I would be using will be to uh, flag the potential anomalies and red flags. So this will help me to focus my audit towards the problem areas. So when I give this prompt, I also made sure that everything was clearly spelled out. That is what all were the areas that I want AI to check, like net income, revenue recognition, gross margin fluctuation, and the beneath component wise red flags, etc. So while I gave this prompt, this is the result that Claude gave me. If you can see, it's beautifully presented with each area where they have flagged the key findings and the risk level, the suspicious period. So these are the periods which I should focus on more while I conduct my forensic audit. Let's go to the second thing. That's the Venetian score component analysis. Here also, each uh, area, each component wise, it is given me which years are critical and why they are critical. What were the warning signs? And also the third, supplementary forensic indicators. That is the comparison of revenue to receivables, cash flow from operations to net income, depreciation to gross PP and such critical ratios. And finally, I got a summary table of each area and the year where I have to focus and the potential issues along with the recommended actions. Here, I got the uh, exact things which I should consider while uh, taking my samples in each head, like in accounts receivable, I have to take the confirmation of balances, analyze the credit approval documentation, and even accrual accounting, the manual journal entries, cash flow management, et cetera. So here in conclusion also, it is specifically mentioned that 2018 to 22 is the year where the fraud could have happened. And it is specifically flagged the uh, areas as well. Now, my third and last prompt would be to use this to create a very comprehensive forensic audit plan. While I give this prompt, I ensure that I mention what are the details I want AI to cover in the audit plan. So I have given all the details. You can take the help of AI to generate the prompts because if you're clear about what you want, you can prompt AI to give you prompt which you can refine and uh, modify according to your requirement. So this was the audit plan generated by Claude. So this is my pre-audit planning phase. Here, the audit objectives, scope, and the rationale why it was chosen is specifically mentioned. And also for interview, who are the key persons that I have to Adhuriji, last two minutes. Rational. Yeah, sure. And also detailed testing procedures, fraud specific investigative procedures. So these have been identified based on the previous two prompts. That is, the areas have been picked out from the Benish analysis and also the uh, anomaly flagging. And finally, there's a reporting framework that how I have to present the report and uh, a project timeline and milestones. And finally, an executive summary. So to conclude, 
This complete workflow involves uh, involve three key steps. That is, first, we analyze the data using Claude. Second, we validated the insights with Python tool for an independent M score confirmation. And we refine our understanding by reconciling any mismatches. So this combines AI's pattern recognition abilities with a deterministic validation clubbed with our professional expertise, creating a powerful forensic audit framework. So this allows us to quickly identify the potential manipulation and focus our investigation on the high-risk areas and develop the target audit procedures. So this is a perfect example of how technology can enhance rather than replace the professional judgment of forensic auditors. That's all from me today. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, very nice presentation. But I, I have one small question that uh, with respect to you uh, posting data on these AI tools, how do you deal with data security? Because uh, actually what I did was I uh, clear, cleansed my data before I used it on Claude. So this, if you can see, this would be my input. My input did not have any detail about the client or client's name or its area of business. There was no such information that was shared. So right. that is the so first one thing. Needs to, that, is, that is what I was trying to bring to the notice of everyone that before putting yes. the data, you have to remove the client sensitive information. So yeah, uh, right, right. Put it on plot and very, and the kind of Python stuff also, which you have shown is very nice. And it, it, it even, you know, uh, eliminates that risk of data getting leaked because it is all done in my, on the system itself. Right. Yeah, yeah right. Right. Thank you so much for the uh, presentation.